President Biden has tonight sought to defend the manner of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan after chaotic scenes at Kabul airport as desperate Afghans tried to flee the country following the Taliban's takeover yesterday. People crowded around departing aircraft and some even clung on as the planes took off. Several are reported to have been killed. U.S. and U.K. troops are engaged in evacuating their citizens while the international community tries to define its response to the Taliban's lightning speed victory. We'll have more on President Biden's speech in a moment, but our first report tonight is from our South Asia correspondent, Sikunda Kamani. Running for their lives, frantically trying to escape Afghanistan on this US military plane. This is how desperate some Afghans are to leave the country. A handful tragically clinging on even after takeoff before falling to their deaths. Foreign nationals and some Afghans are being evacuated, but huge crowds gathered after rumors even those without visas could travel. Outside the airport, even more chaos. Taliban members firing in the air to assert their authority, trying to keep control. Despite the dangers, some residents still risking their lives to try and get inside. The group has promised an amnesty to those with links to the government, but many still fear they'll be targeted by the militants. Inside the airport, American forces fired into the air too. US officials claim two armed Afghans were killed. An eyewitness told the BBC the victims were ordinary people. I just saw with my eyes three people, but there's more people maybe. It's very, very bad situation and people is in uh, chaos. No one is quite sure what comes next in Afghanistan, though it's clear the Taliban are in charge. Their members are out in force, patrolling in vehicles seized from government security forces. We're preventing looters and thieves from harming the people, says this fighter. The group has also reportedly been demanding all weapons are handed over to them. The unravelling of the state has come at a pace many are still struggling to comprehend. Now it will be the Taliban who decide what direction the country takes. We want an Afghan inclusive uh, Islamic uh, government. Uh, so by that we mean all other Afghans have also participation in that government. So of course that need uh, a little bit time and uh, deliberation and uh, talks. The terror and panic at the airport today, an awful ending to two decades of international efforts to rebuild this country. For all its fractures and rampant corruption, Afghanistan had also seen fragile progress. The future for its people is now deeply uncertain. Sikandar Kamani, BBC News. For the latest from Kabul, we can speak to the BBC's Malik Mudassar. Um, Malik, we saw scenes of panic at the airport and you were there. What was it like? Well, uh, this morning when I went to uh, airport to see what's the situation like there, it was the most chaotic scene I've ever seen in the last 10 years. The people, they were just trying to get to airport from uh, their, with their families, children and everybody it was like rushing to get into airport. They were climbing walls, they were just they were not even scared of the bullets which Taliban firing towards them to disperse them. And I could see the desperation and the anxiety on their faces that they just want to flee out of this country even. They didn't have any travel documents like passport and tickets. And in the city centre, Malik, what's the atmosphere like now? Well, in the city centre this afternoon, I've seen uh, patrolling, Taliban patrolling in those vehicles which was provided by two, uh, two Afghan forces lately and uh, they were there and they were controlling the traffic and they have taken over the, all the official buildings and their paperwork as well. Malik, thank you. That's the BBC's Malik Mudassar in Kabul. 
Well, President Biden tonight defended the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, saying he stood squarely behind his decision and that there was never a good time to withdraw. But he did acknowledge that events there had unfolded more quickly than anticipated. Our North America editor John Sopel reports. The sudden capture of the country's capital has shocked the world. Whatever the political bent of the network, the Taliban has taken over Afghanistan, seizing control of Kabul. With the verdict today has been unanimous and brutal. The Biden administration is redefining the word incompetence. An epic humiliation of U.S. foreign policy, a woeful mishandling by President Biden. Just a month ago, the president said a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan was highly unlikely. And given this torrid backdrop, Joe Biden had little choice but to cut short his vacation and return to Washington by helicopter. How else? To answer his critics, he was unrepentant. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. And he shifted the blame firmly on Afghanistan's leaders and their military. We gave them every tool they could need. We paid their salaries, provided for the maintenance of their Air Force. We gave them every chance to determine their own future. And then he posed this question. So I'm left again to ask of those who argue that we should stay. How many more generations of America's daughters and sons would you have me send to fight Afghanistan's civil war? The hurried evacuation of the U.S. Embassy caught everyone by surprise and has unleashed a torrent of criticism. It seems the Biden administration, again, has no plan and has created another crisis in Afghanistan where it didn't need to be at the end of the day. This is about leadership and the way in which we are uh, removing ourselves and withdrawing from Afghanistan didn't need to occur. What do we want? Peace. When do we want it? And outside the White House, there have been protests from pro-Afghan groups. This woman served two tours of duty in Afghanistan with the U.S. Air Force. Today I'm embarrassed to be an American. Why? Um, because we pretended to be allies with these people and then we just left lambs to the slaughter. It's immoral. Our drawdown was irresponsible and immoral. And America's better than this. And the anguish is deep among former Afghan nationals. They don't care anymore Afga about Afghanistan. We are not as import important as we were back in 2000. That's the reason we are here. We are here in order to speak up for the women who worked for the United States. In Herat today, near the Iranian border, life is carrying on with an air of normality. But what will this city and the country feel like in a few months' time with the Taliban back in charge? Will it be 2001 all over again? John Sopel, BBC News, Washington. It's 20 years since the Taliban was toppled by the U.S., who blamed them after 9-11 for harboring Osama bin Laden and other al-Qaeda figures. The Taliban say they have changed since last being in power. Back then, they established Sharia law and denied rights to women. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, looks now at how the Taliban is likely to govern this time and how the world might engage with them. Step by step, a return to rule. Ever since the Taliban signed a deal last year with the U.S., their old enemy, they've been emboldened. Moments like this started to raise their international profile, and recent months saw their flags hoisted on the ground. District by district, they won the fight against Afghan troops. And in many places, they just walked in. Not because they were strong, the government was weak. The corrupt government and the corrupt leaders and those and that government, they were also pretty much responsible for this fight because they didn't stand up by their own people. They didn't take in the rural areas into confidence, rural people into confidence. They took the aid money and they just went away. And that's the reason that so many people lost confidence in them. 
these scenes were recently filmed for us in Wardak, a province at the gates of Kabul. Scenes of an orderly transition, the Taliban taking over, taking care of the people. But more grisly videos have been surfacing too, of alleged abuses and atrocities. What do you say now to those who fear the return of the Taliban? They should not fear. They should not fear because uh, the government which, is, which will, will, will come after this which will be acceptable to all Afghanistan. But Taliban rule returns to an Afghanistan dramatically different from the one they governed so harshly in the late 1990s. We've reported on the change, however imperfect and incomplete, over the past two decades. No one expecting their lives could be so suddenly shattered. Afghans, especially women, now fearing they will lose everything they gained. I'm speaking for millions of Afghan girls and women who are about to lose their freedom to go to school, to work and to participate in the political, economic and social life of the country. And Afghanistan's neighbours are anxious too. The fate of this landlocked country affects them all. To the north, Central Asian states know how easily extremism crosses borders, reaching Russia too. Iran knows Afghans will flee its way, and any instability will spill into Pakistan too, and far beyond. So many people have become internally displaced in Afghanistan. So many are, are, are becoming refugees. So we actually need immediate help and assistance for them. Uh, there is, you know, there's so much to talk about right now. And a lot of us are just deeply, uh, you know, deeply depressed about the situation there. A depressing, deeply uncertain and dangerous time. For now, most Afghans are just trying to get through each day before they confront fundamental questions about their future. Lise Tousset, BBC News.